Do you know what some of them people think about me? Why are we not doing what God wants us to do? Is these the things that we want in our life? Do we want our enemies, the one that hates us, the ones that persecute us? Do we want them to have rule over our life? Do we want to run from them? Or do we want to stand and say, I love you. I've got God on my side. I'm praying for you. And I'm going to go on and do what God wants me to do. And I'm going to have power in doing so. Yeah. Continue. And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Wow. I can remember most of my sins. I don't want to remember them all. But he's going to punish me seven times more than my sins. I know we're not to look back. But for just for a moment, think about what, everything you've done in your life. It's all covered under the blood for everybody here, at least how I hope and pray. I think about all of us are. But you think about all your sins. I don't want that to come back on me. Let alone seven times more. From God Almighty, the one that can cause anything to happen to me in my life. Go on. And I will break the pride of your power. All right, right there. I didn't understand that, the pride of your power. And when I started reading it and I went back, it said over in our, our blessings, it said that five of you can chase a hundred, and a hundred of you can chase ten thousand. The pride of your power. All that power to chase away the demons and Satan and all your enemies, that's all gone. The ones around you, the five around you, or the hundred around you that gives you more power in Christ, that pride, have you ever heard of the lion's pride? It's the, how many is there, that's all gone. No support system, it's all gone. Why are we not doing what God wants us to do? Yes, it's hard in our flesh, but if we subject our spirit and we get it under subjection, it's not that hard. Heard Sister Regina saying she's been praying, listening to music. You feel better? Who doesn't feel better? I got up today, started listening to my music, opened up my Bible, makes you feel better. When we're out in the world, not just the carnal sicknesses, but the spiritual sicknesses that are out there, if we would learn to fight it back with our sword, the Word of God, use your words. We wouldn't feel so bad. When we use what God has given us, we're going to feel better. When we listen to our Christian music, when we hear the Word of God, when we listen to the Word of God, if we read the Word of God, get on the phone with another Christian and just talk Bible. Do something. Do something good and not nothing bad. Says so I will break the pride of your power and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass and your strength shall be spent in vain for your land shall yield not yield her increase neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits all right i've heard people say this before when i would preach to them at work or something they would say but i'm a good person I do what I'm supposed to do. I go to work. And I actually seen somebody just doing this the other night on Facebook. My husband is such a good man. He works hard. He provides for me and my daughter. And, you know, he gives us everything we need. They drive a nice car. They have a nice home. They're hellbound. It's not just about being a good person. He's not going to let your fruits increase. They might be doing it here on earth. But here on earth isn't what matters. It's after earth. It's when God comes back and takes us, where are we going? You don't just have to be a good person. You have to do God's will. Continue. And you shall walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me. I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. There it is again. Seven more times. We're talking 14 times now. 14 times my sins. I don't want to think of that number. I'm not good at math. And I don't think anybody in here is that.
that good at math, to be able to do 14 times all their sins. I don't want to do it. I want to do God's will. I want to do what God wants me to do. I don't want to, and I don't want to do it just because I'm afraid of all this, which I am. But I want to do it because it's from my heart. I don't want to just do eye service. I want to do heart service. I will send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children, destroy your cattle, make few in number. Your highway shall be desolate. How many loves their children in here tonight? Amen. I used to think, I used to tell people, and I still will, I hope that in the last days that I am a strong enough person and that I have raised my children or that the family that is around them, our church family, that we have taught our children enough to in the last days, if my child is going to be hurt, that's all I'm going to say on that part, and they look at me and they say, deny Christ or you lose your child. I hope that I have enough strength to look at my daughters and say, honey, close your eyes and I'll see you in heaven. Nobody wants to think about losing their children. It's a heart-wrenching, I couldn't do it. I don't want to think about it. But God's saying he's going to take them. God, you know, that merciful, loving person that we talk about, if you don't do his will, he's not so loving. He's not so merciful towards you because you're coming against him. He created every fiber of your body. And you can't give him a little bit of Sunday. You can't give him a prayer a day, one day a week fasting. You can't think out of a 24-hour period. You can't stop and say, Lord, I love you. Brother David does it. I hear others do it. He just told you. Every day, make sure you say, Lord, I love you. If you can't remember to tell the one that died on the cross for you that you love him, you don't even have to pick up the phone. It's not something you have to physically do. You don't have to get on Facebook and look for him and message him. You don't have to call him up or send him a letter in the mail. You can just thank it. Just say it. Lord, I love you. Just give him some honor and some glory. Because if not, this is what comes to you. He'll take your children. He'll take your life. Fourteen times your sin is coming back to you. Continue. And if you will not be reformed by me, by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you, and will punish you even seven times for your sins. All right, somebody tell me what seven times three. Oh, I told you I wasn't that good at math. Now we're at 21 times your sins. 21 times my sins. I don't want to think about that. They're so horrible. I don't, I don't even like, I didn't even like to utter them to God. Has anybody ever done that when you're praying? And you come down here, I've done it. And I thought, what is holding me back? And I knew what it was. It was that one sin that I had never confessed to God. He knew it, of course, but I'd never confessed it to him. We don't even want to utter to Jesus, the one that knows us inside and out. We don't even want to utter to him our sins. But we're willing to take 21 times it just because we won't, don't want to do the will of God. Continue. And I will bring a sword upon you that you avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when you are gathered together within your cities... I will send the pestilence sending you, and that ye shall deliver it unto the hand of the enemy. He's going to deliver me to my enemy. So that person that hates me, not only is he going to have power over me, but now God's going to deliver me to him. So if I thought I was safe running from him, now God's going to awaken their eyes and let him know where I'm at. All this, because we don't want to do God's will. Wasn't the first part of the chapter so much better? Continue. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall take your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat 
and not be satisfied. That's a lot of bread. It's better than Texas Roadhouse bread. It's not going to satisfy us. So no matter what we do in the world, it's not going to satisfy It's not going to satisfy me. Nothing I can do out there. There's no music that I can listen to. There's no drug that I can take. There's no person I can get with. There's no friend that I can have that's going to be enough. It's not going to be enough to satisfy you. So again, why are we not doing God's will? No matter what you're trying to do on your own, it's not going to satisfy you. God's word doesn't lie. And we're still not doing God's will. Continue. And if you will not, for all this hearken unto me, but will walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. Twenty-eight times our sins. I don't want to do twenty-eight times one of my sins. If I choose my least sin, I wouldn't want to get it back twenty-eight more times. Are you kidding me? I don't want to be spanked by anybody, let alone God. Twenty-eight times one sin. All I have to do is live for it. I know this isn't a fiery message, but it's, it's what you message. all need to hear. 